Hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Usheng Bagush, Monster Killer. Now then, last episode was a particularly perilous episode, and I feel like we've fallen a bit behind on our fortress here. There are so many things we really should have done by now in the fort, and so this episode we're really going to try to catch up on some of that crap. We do now have a barracks, but our warriors need weapons and armor. That's a high priority. The goblins attacked last episode, and we need a way to defend against them, or else there's going to be trouble eventually. Also, forgotten beasts. Those things could pop up at any point. We have to be prepared. I know I've said it before, but here we are. Still not prepared. Not good at all. Now let's zoom in here. Alright, well I didn't do much between episodes at all, but we did actually have another artifact pop up. I'll show that off real quick, even though it's a very boring one. Let's see here. Yes, here it is. Esdor Shafel. Cell Serpents. A pigtail face veil. It has a neat name, I'll give it that. This is a pigtail face veil. All craft worship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of pigtail, and it is made from pigtail cloth. The thread is midnight blue with dimpled eye. That is it, fellas. A simple blue cloth face veil. I mean, it's neat. You don't often see dwarves make face veils, but there's really not a whole heck of a lot to it. But I suppose it is an artifact, so, you know, there's probably a little bit of a, an extra accoutrement to it, if you will. But nothing too crazy. We'll have to get it thrown in our museum. There we go. Very good. Anywho. Well, the merchants are here currently. We should do some trading before they leave. All right, now then, let's see. What do we have here? A whole bunch of stuff, really. No cows, unfortunately. Sorry, Doosome. But they did bring some booze. Always good. As well as a wide array of weapons. Yeah, what the hell, we'll take some. I'm not too concerned about the metal type or quality. I'll let the dwarves use whatever the hell they want. Which I know is going to drive some of you guys crazy, but I gotta level with you. Sometimes the most sensible or efficient way to do things is boring as hell. There we go. Got some assorted weapons and armor, and some booze. Works for me. A pleasure doing business with you. And now that we're done with trading, I just got the message that these two were tapirs over in the Eastern Caverns just turned back into a dwarf and a human. So we have a month of safety where we can go out into the Eastern Caverns once more. Now we're going to want to take advantage of this just because over in the Eastern Caverns we have these cage traps which currently have creatures in them. And I would dearly love to get those into the fortress. And so I'm going to start taking down this wall here and we're going to head out into the Eastern Caverns just real quick. Oh, we have some migrants. Just one moment. Let's see what we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten more dwarves. Currently 86 individuals in the fortress. Now that I've ordered this wall to be taken down out to the eastern caverns, it looks like the were tapir is helping doing that. Probably kind of eager to get back into the fortress. Not gonna happen, buddy. I'm sorry. Now my dwarves are going back out into the eastern caverns. We have to get that place cleaned up. Okay, and here come the dwarves carrying the wooden cages holding the cavern beasts. Get them to safety, dwarves. Before the next full moon rises and the were tapirs begin to stalk the caverns, currently a cave crocodile in the northern caverns. I'm sending the squads out to take care of it. Can't have a threat like that walking around. All right, the dwarves are fighting. Looks like somebody died. Oh my god, that was quick. Oh yeah, bad news. We shook that poor dwarf around by their body. Yeah, that's no good at all. Well, I suppose that's what happens. At least you met your end in a way befitting a proper hunter of Usheng Vagush. We thank you. All right, over here in the museum, I just moved that bat corpse over just to one of the side pedestals, and I've made room for that second forgotten beast. Here it comes. There we are. All right, yeah, you see? We just put the second forgotten beast up on a pedestal, and the pedestal is just fine, seemingly. Only the flaming blob corpse seemed to destroy a pedestal. Very strange. I think we're going to have to do some more testing with that. Hmm. Look at here. Over in the northern caverns, we have a pack of naked mole dogs. Haven't seen those yet in this cavern level. Let's take a look. A naked mole dog is a large, pale rodent with loose-hanging, hairless skin. It has long teeth and an incredibly powerful bite. It is found underground. This particular one is very skinny, her skin is pink, and her eyes are black. Very cool. Yeah, I just checked the wiki. These things are as big as one of the dogs we already have in the fortress. And unfortunately, you can't train them into war naked mole dogs, so I don't know how useful they could be, really. I mean, they're neat looking for sure, but I'm thinking our squads just found something to practice on. Go get him, guys. Looks like the naked mole dogs are trying to come down into the fortress. That's going to be a mistake. And here come the dwarves. Or, or not. Nah, looks like one of them just ran back into the fortress. Okay, here they come. <laughs> Off into the caves. The hunt is on. All right, the dogs are running over this way towards some water. That's a dead end. Go get him, dwarves. There we go. A nice hunt to raise morale. Nothing wrong with that. Very good. All right, now then, if we take a look down here in our stockpile, we do have four wooden cages now, each holding an exotic cavern beast. Oh, hey, now, just realized that the were tapirs are still out in the eastern caverns. I have to block that back up ASAP. 
Oof, man, that could be stupid. All right, is anybody out there anywhere? Please don't be anybody out in the caverns. I think we're good. Come on, get this wall back up. Oh, 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 man. Okay, so we do have the- Okay, the wear taper was just killed up here. Good. But we still have this human over here. Uh, they appear to be wounded, but there's no dwarves around, so we should be safe. Good, good, good. Man, that was a close call, I'll tell ya. Anywho, where was I? Ah, yes, these animals over here. So we have a giant cave toad, a giant cave crocodile, a troll, and a giant cave swallow. Pretty interesting. I'm gonna start training those guys, and, uh, well, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do with them exactly. It would be totally awesome if we can get our hands on another cave crocodile, because those would make an excellent addition to our fortress's defenses. Now, unfortunately, the crocodile can't be trained for war, but that shouldn't matter that much, I don't think. The thing's a brute anyways. I'm sure we can find something to do with it. The toad could be cool as well, but we'll have to see what happens. I'm really looking to focus on that crocodile. And the swallow? Meh, I'm thinking about butchering it. And unfortunately, we can't do anything with a troll. I might just have to throw it to my military. And now, because we have so many animals, and I'm looking to get more, I don't think this tiny little room for the spider is going to cut it anymore. So let's go over there. We'll make a stairway in the back, just down. And then we'll make a long haul over this way right here, just like that. With a few stalls that we can put the creatures in, chain them up in the back, you know? That way they can't interact with each other, and they'll still have plenty of room to move around. Well, I don't know about plenty, but enough room. And we'll shift it up just a tiny bit. Just like that. All right, putting the dwarves back into the fortress right now. Oh my god, okay, um, it's currently the second of Moonstone, and on the sixth, the were tapirs turn back into their beast forms, and here we have the one remaining were beast uh, entering the fortress. That is awful. All right, they're coming in, coming into the fortress. They're in the fortress right now. Going up. It looks like they might be going out the north end of the fortress. Good. Okay, so they're out of the fortress right now. So I'm going to try to build a wall right here so we can keep them the hell out. What do you say? Oh, come on. Get that wall up. Please, please, please. Oh, man. They're coming back. Um, all right. I'm going to lock this door. So now at least they're stuck out in the caverns. And I'm going to try to wall up this hallway down here instead. Because if that beast takes down those doors, it'll be in the fortress. Not something we really want to have happen. All right. There we go. We are safe. Man, this weird beast is quite a pest. But unfortunately, there's no direct way to control the thing. Well, there's a monster slayer out by it right now. Maybe he can kill it. Oh, there, there they go. They're fighting. And not looking good. Monster slayer's dead. Yeah, I'm not too sure what we could do about this. Because it's a human monster slayer, I can't give it any direction whatsoever. Ugh, we're going to have to find something to do with it. It's going to be a problem eventually if we don't. All right, well, I'll tell you what. How about we come down here, right? And I'm going to make a little place just like this. A quaint little nook. There we are. It's a nice looking little place, right? Throw a door up there. How about a bed in the corner? Looks good to me. Oh boy, another forgotten beast. Bring it on! The forgotten beast AE has come. A huge one-eyed kestrel. It has a pair of squat antennae, and it squirms and fidgets. Its sandy taupe feathers are patchy. Beware its webs. Oh man, webs. That's no joke, I'll tell you. Although it is a kestrel. What is that? Just like a tiny little hawk or something. Hmm. All right, well, I guess I shouldn't go underestimating it quite yet. Webs. Now, I haven't fought something that sprays webs in quite some time, but if memory serves, they are quite deadly. So really, I'm not too sure what to expect from this thing. I'd like to run out and just face the thing head on, but that might be terribly foolish. And here it is up in this cavern, flying around in the air. Now, let's see, where is this exactly? Ah, you know what? That creature is currently down in the lower section of cavern that we have not yet accessed. Or rather, we did access it, but then I walled it up real quick. So I'll tell you what, he could just relax down there for a little bit, and we'll resume our quaint little room down here. Yes, here we are. There we are, a nice bed in there. And I'll tell you what, that bed, we're going to make that be for the wear tapir. How does that sound? I mean, if they're going to spend all this time out in the caverns, they might as well have a nice place to sleep. And we have a door up there. Oh, shit. Uh, okay. Damp stone located. Well, we were carving out the Queen's Mausoleum here, and it looks like we may have dug into this water up top here. That's pretty stupid. All right, you dwarves, get to the burrow just real quick. Man, I hope this doesn't get ugly. Go ahead, there you go. All right, yeah. Unfortunately, we dug into the underground lake, and now it's draining into the Queen's Mausoleum. A foolish, foolish mistake. But it shouldn't be a big deal, I don't think. We'll just scrap this project, and we'll wall it up, and we'll make a new one over this way. See, not a big deal at all. There we go, and that's what it's gonna look like. And this time I made sure there's no water right above it. Anywho, all right, it doesn't look like that damn were beast is heading down to her room at all. What a pain, I'll tell you. All right, another forgotten beast. The forgotten beast, Mup, has come. Mup? A huge skinless badger. It has wings and it has a bloated body. Beware its poisonous vapors. Ugh, that doesn't sound like a good one. Poisonous vapors? Damn. Yeah, that sounds 
pretty deadly, actually. I guess there's still a chance it could be down in the lower caverns, right? And it is not. It's actually quite close to the fortress. Poisonous vapors, huh? That sounds pretty awful. Hmm. What to do? What to do? Well, I mean, really, when you get down to it, if we don't take care of this problem right now, there's just going to be more and more forgotten beasts popping up all over the place. It probably would be for the best if we went out and faced the thing, huh? Vexing. Well, I'm going to tell you what. For now, anyways, I'm going to send the dwarves to the burrow. Everyone to the fortress, let's go. All right, dwarves are getting to the fortress, that's good. And Mup seems to be heading over quickly. All right, I'm gonna err on the side of caution for now and try to wall up the northern gate. I don't really wanna joke around with this guy. Oh, hey now, interesting turn. It looks like that were taper is heading out the northern gate right now. Hmm. And now they're outside the fortress and I'm going to lock up these doors behind them. There we go. Good, good. All right, now I'm thinking this monster slayer has a pretty good chance of running into that beast as it makes for the fortress. Let's see what happens, I'm pretty curious. Come on dwarves, get that hall walled up, please. All right, almost there, almost there. Okay, and the hall is walled up now, fantastic. Still waiting on that beast. All right, and it's coming around up towards the north gate. All right, it's moving in, trying to destroy this door now. It doesn't look like that monster slayer has any interest in killing the beast, bizarre. All right, Mup has wrenched one of the doors off the hinges. The human continues to stand there. What are you doing, dude? Ugh, now Mup is just going and destroying all of these workshops. Thanks, dude. You jerk. Coming back around. It does not seem to have spotted the human, or at least didn't care very much about it. Hmm, <laughs> damn. Oh well. Well, originally I had wanted to go out there and kill that forgotten beast right off the bat, but now I'm thinking if there's a chance that I could kill this wear tape here out here, then I should probably just hold off a little bit, you know? Oh, neato. Amost Anulu Shat, the gut puller, has withdrawn from society. Very cool. Amost Anulu Shat has claimed a clothier shop. Oh, Mup appears to be fighting that human and it killed the wear tapir. Okay, good. So now we have no more wear tapirs on the map at all. Fantastic. Well, I suppose we were waiting for Mup to kill that wear tapir, and now we have no excuse. We have to go out and fight the beast. It's the dwarven way. Besides, I didn't see any poison gas when it was fighting that human. There's probably nothing to worry about. But perhaps we'll wait for this strange mood dwarf to complete their artifact. Ah, there they are. And Mostanula Shat has begun a mysterious construction. Fantastic. And hopefully it doesn't end up being the last artifact to come out of Usheng Vagush. But I guess we'll see. Amos Tainulu Shat, the gut puller, has created Othil Kakath, a pigtail rope. Man, that sounds boring. He claims it as a personal treasure. Well, let's take a look at the thing. Othil Kakath, the weak tundras. This is a pigtail rope. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of pigtail. It is made from pigtail cloth. On the item is an image of rose-cut gems and high wood. On the item is an image of animals and the climate, and other topics, the hornbill parchment scroll, in blue garnet. And on the item is an image of chicory, in orthoclase. How the hell do you put an image of an item on a rope, using rock, or gem for that matter? That doesn't make any damn sense. Well, again, I'm sure it worked out somehow, I mean, I'm looking at the damn thing. You know, God forbid you dwarves make a piece of armor, a weapon, perhaps, maybe a cool piece of furniture? This is a rope. Ugh. Here I am degrading this dwarf's life work. What a jerk, huh? Anyways, good job. We'll get it thrown in the museum right away. There we are, see? Its own pedestal and everything. So boring. All right, well, now that we've made that artifact, I suppose we have to head out into the caves now. That is what I said I was going to do, right? Well, let's get this over with. Deconstructing the northern wall. And I'm gonna move the squads into this stockpile area. Man, I hope this goes well. All right, the wall is down. Brace yourselves, dwarves. I'm not too sure where the beast is. There's a giant cave spider out in the northern cavern, but it looks like the forgotten beast is down in the south right now. Well, that's good. Well, how about a little warm up, fellas? Let's get the spider. They're moving out, moving. They're engaged with the spider. I'm not too sure what they're doing right now. The spider is over on the eastern side here where they kill those naked mole dogs. Oh, here come the warriors. I see a bunch of webs. Ooh, that could be ugly. What happened, did they kill it? I think they got it. Yeah, they got it, there it is. Although that was an ugly battle. Man, oh man. Mup the Forgotten Beast is still down south, destroying the bed in this little room. And I'm gonna keep the warriors out in the northern cavern just for now. Just so they're ready when that beast shows up. All right, the dwarves are assembled. Everything is quiet. I'm not sure where the Forgotten Beast is. It could be on its way. Who's to say, really? Oh, oh boy. All right, we were waiting for a while and I put the squads back into the fortress. But the beast has just arrived. All right, what are we gonna do? 
Well, first of all, I'm gonna lock these two small doors down here. And I suppose I'm gonna assemble the squads down in the stockpile here. Moving the squads into the stockpile. The beast has begun trying to take the door down here. This may go very badly. Come on, dwarves. Get to it. All right, there's a cave crocodile coming in behind the beast. It's now dead. All right, dwarves, everyone here? Let's do this. For Usheng Vagush. All right, they're fighting the creature. I see an injured dwarf. It looks like they've completely covered the beast. Blood everywhere. They killed it. Fantastic. Good job, dwarves. Man, so much blood. Gotta take a look at that combat. Well, let's see here. It looks like the squads fought pretty well straight from the beginning. Very well, actually. And really, all things considered, it doesn't look like the beast was able to do that much. Oh, except for right here. It looks like Mup kicked one of the sand blades in the head and their head exploded. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Very rough. But other than that, there wasn't too much trauma to our small army. I neglected to mention that after we fought that cave spider, we lost two dwarves. One sand blade and one spike. So they actually did better fighting this forgotten beast than they did that cave spider. Not too bad, dwarves. Now about those poisonous vapors. Still not 100% what that entails exactly. Yeah, just gonna have to keep a close eye on all my military dwarves. Ugh, one of whom just died. Damn, that's no good. Let's hope it's not vapor related. Well, anywho, dwarves, back to work. The caves are now relatively safe once again. And of course, we'll have to remember to get that forgotten beast corpse put in our museum. There we are. Fantastic. Three forgotten beasts. Not too shabby if I say so myself. And actually, now we're going to need some more pedestals in here as well. Soon we'll need a new trophy hall. Getting a bit cramped in here. And it looks like the elves are back. Welcome, welcome. Let's see what you got, you pointy-eared lily eaters. Let's have a look here. Oh, a giant firefly cage. That's pretty cool. We'll take it. They also brought a panda and a lion. We'll take both those. A giant aardvark. What the hell? Spider monkey? Sure. Most of these things I'll probably end up butchering. Oh, a male and female panda, huh? Interesting. We'll take some clothing, sure. Various fruits. We'll take them. And once more, we'll trade you a bunch of tattered clothing. Good stuff. Some of the best tattered clothing around, really. But this time, we actually do have some carved bone crafts as well. Not that I think there was anything wrong with our bloody clothing we were trading. But, you know, to each their own. Here you are. And as always, it was a pleasure doing business with you, you frilly-faced leaf kissers. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm actually going to butcher up all of those animals we just traded for. Mm, except for the giant firefly. I like the looks of that one. I don't think it's going to live very long, but that would be pretty cool if we could get a population of them. But alas, the rest we will butcher. Too many damn animals running around. It's kind of annoying. But that's alright, we're not going to need them anyways. Because if we have a look over here, we've actually captured another cave crocodile. Isn't that exciting? And this one, my friends, is a male. So we do now have a male and female cave crocodile. Very exciting. Ah, and some more migrants, who have arrived despite the danger. Hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 20. 20 more dwarves. Wow, that's uh, quite a number. Up to 98 dwarves now. A tad worrisome. This right here is not a 90 dwarf fortress. This is a tiny place, really. Hmm, I suppose we should start thinking about going down lower. We need more room to spread out. This place isn't going to cut it anymore. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look here. Just for the hell of it. Down this stairwell. Down into the lower caverns where that other forgotten beast currently is. This is a very tall cavern here. Extremely tall. And unfortunately, it doesn't really look like there's a lot of flat area around here. Eh, let's kind of, let's take a look around a tiny bit here. Yeah, not seeing too much in the way of flat area. Yeah, you know, I'm not too sure. Eh, to hell with it. We can at least take a look out here in these tunnels. I know there's a forgotten beast out here, but it shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. Nothing to worry about, says I. I mean, what are webs gonna do anyways? Get us all sticky? Ooh, I'm so scared. All right, now we're just carving out this little area here. And when we break into the caverns, hopefully my dwarves will fight that forgotten beast in this room. I'm not sure if that's gonna be a good idea, but I guess we'll find out soon enough, huh? Let's go, dwarves. Another beast awaits, and hopefully this one goes well. Webs are nothing to mess around with. Like, for real, I know I joked earlier, but this could get ugly. All right, now, open the caverns. Let's go, dwarves. And here comes a miner. We have broken into the cavern. No sign of the beast yet. Stay wary, dwarves. Don't let your guard down. A couple of dwarves have taken up spotter positions out in the tunnels. Still no sign of the beast. I'm gonna have some more miners come out here and start opening up these caverns just a little bit. Careful, dwarves. The caves are quiet. Nothing stirs. Could the creature be out there? Waiting, watching perhaps, with its single eye, who's to say? Keep on your toes. Do not get complacent, dwarves. Nothing yet, nothing at all. 
Well, at least we've cleared out a large area here in case the beast does show up. But I'm not sure where it is. That has me a bit concerned. Alright, once more the squads are getting very hungry and thirsty, so I'm going to send them back to the fortress. Still no beast. And we're getting this place more and more opened up by the minute. Just be careful, dwarves. Please. Alright, well we've opened it up quite a bit down here. And still no beast. Now I think I'm going to send a squad out. The sand blades. I'm going to call them out and have them explore this cavern level. Just to see if there's any more hospitable places on this lair. If we're going to set up a permanent fortress anywhere, we need access to water and magma. Both very important. Alright, over to the east I see a particularly mossy slope. I think that'll be the first place we check. Be careful dwarves. That beast is out there somewhere. I know it. Eh, there's not too much over here I guess. How about up to the north here? I see a bunch of mushrooms, a whole bunch of moss. Let's take a look. Hmm, alright. Let's continue up this way. Be careful, dwarves. Let's keep moving. Check out this small cavern over here. Kind of muddy. Never know, there could be something over here. Eh, nothing too interesting. How about down over here? Oh, we've discovered a downward passage. Very interesting. Leads to a deeper cavern level. It could well be that that beast went down there. Hmm. A little daunting. Oh, and there it is. A, the forgotten beast. As the dwarves made for that downward passage, perhaps they heard some sounds coming from the caverns. Echoing screeches. Muffled wing beats. Here it is. Now I want us to take a moment and appreciate this scene. Here's the forgotten beast, perched in the branches of this fungi wood tree. A fungus tree that is splattered with blood, and covered with forgotten beast silk. Also note the bones that are hanging from the branches. Bones of a rutherer. An underground monster. It looks to be Ae's most recent kill. Now just a skeleton. The meat picked clean from the bones. It lays here on the ground, covered with silk, and surrounded by scattered remains. I'm not too sure what the beast is doing up here right now. It looks to just be sitting, minding its own business. Perhaps it's made a lair for itself? Very bizarre. Most of the time these creatures spend their time rampaging around the caverns, but Ae seems content just sitting in this tree. Well, I'll tell you what, we're not going to worry too much about it right now. The dwarves are just up to the northwest. Here's that downward passage. We're just going to check it out real quick, real carefully, just to see if there's anything down there. And that'll be enough exploring for now. The sand blades are starting to get tired, and we don't want them too worn out. Let's do it. Oh hey, neat. Katen Mercethanad, the bone mender, is taken by a fey mood. Very cool. Good luck, buddy. That is, of course, our one fortress doctor. You gotta respect the guy. He's got a lot on his plate. Alright, so this is what's at the bottom of that downward passage. And I believe this is the lowest cavern level. All kinds of weird mushroom trees. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's a whole heck of a lot of flat space down here. That kind of stinks. We'll have to revisit this place later. Right now, I don't feel too comfortable with that forgotten beast lurking around, though. I'm sending the sand blades home for now. Go ahead, guys. And while those guys are taking a rest, I'm going to have those two cave crocodiles we caught put in this tiny little room down here. They are both trained now, and so I don't imagine they'll cause that much of a ruckus, as long as we keep up on that. There we are. Very cool. And getting a nest box in place. Oh, and we do have some cave crocodile eggs right now. Fantastic. 45 eggs? That is insane. I'm going to make sure to forbid those so nobody takes them and tries to cook with them or something. Beautiful. We'll have some nice tame cave crocodiles before long. Katan Mercethanod has begun a mysterious construction. Fantastic. Katan Mercethanod, the bone mender, has created Duthal Baban, a orthoclase amulet. He claims it as a family heirloom. Let's have a look. The Worthy Ball. This is an orthoclase amulet. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with oval orthoclase capicons and encircled with bands of cave spider silk, cushion red spinal capicons, and alpaca wool. On the item is an image of a tarot, an orthoclase. A bizarre touch. Well, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting one, I guess. A nice amulet with some tarot on it. Good job, Katan. We'll get it thrown in the museum right away. There we are. Oh, hey, here's something. A human caravan from Iquianthath has arrived. This is the first time the humans have come to our fortress. Very interesting. We'll have to try to make a good impression. All right, now let's see here. Oh, oh boy. Looks like they brought another cow. We'll take it. Oh, some human booze. Exotic. Oh, and strange weapons too. Fantastic. A great axe, huh? I don't even think dwarves can use those. Eh, we'll take it. And a bunch of cloth. Exotic meats. We don't really need it, but it doesn't hurt to have more food, right? Oh, hey, neat. It's a book. Animal diets and other topics. Oh, a scroll, actually. You know what? What the hell? We'll take it. 
And for your goods, we offer the finest of tattered clothing. And we'll trade enough to keep him interested. There we are. And they are ecstatic with the trading. Very good. We're done here. Twas a pleasure doing business with you. All right, guys, I'm going to tell you what. The trading is over, and we are quickly nearing the end of the episode. Now, I could just wait here until something interesting happens, fill up that extra space. But I'll tell you what. I've actually been drinking a little bit, which, you know, I don't typically do while recording because then I make bad decisions. But what the hell, I did it this time. And here we are. Where was I? Right. Something we're going to have to take care of before the end of this episode. Well, you see, we have a little bit of an issue down here in the caverns. A towering, one-eyed, web-spitting issue. There is still a forgotten beast in our caverns. And that just cannot stand. This is our cavern, damn it. We're not going to have this feathered bastard shoving us around. And you might be saying, yo, Krug Smash, maybe you shouldn't be doing this. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I'm sure we can come up with a better decision, a better plan, if you will. Uh, but we're not gonna. Because we are the dwarves of Monster Killer. That's what we do. We have to live up to that. And so we're gonna find a way into this cavern and take out that big bastard. I figure we'll make a little tunnel just like this. There we are. And I'll also get the soldiers in position. I'm really hoping I don't regret this. All right, the tunnel has begun. Prepare yourselves, dwarves. Our quarry awaits. There we are. The creature is still sitting up in its tree, completely unaware. Foolish. All right, dwarves, are you ready? Today we face our most terrifying foe, and yet we laugh. <laughs> Move in, dwarves. All right, the squads are moving in to the beast's chamber. Oh, they're running up to the beast, I believe. Climbing the tree. I'm gonna follow Uzal here. On the top of a mushroom, climbing up into the branches of a fungi wood tree. Fighting. There's a few dwarves here now. Not sure what's going on. I see some blood. This dwarf just fell out of the tree. Oh, and they killed it. By the gods. Fantastic work, dwarves. Let's take a look at that combat. Nothing terrible. Oh, one guy got hit really bad. Was it this guy? Oh, I believe so. Ah, oh, damn it. We lost him. Well, it's a damn shame. You die a hero, Uzal. You hunt now with the gods, my friend. Rest in peace. Well then, guys, I know we're right at the end of this episode, so I'm gonna wrap it up really quick. Let's just say we killed two more Forgotten Beasts this episode, and pretty much I'm thinking we're absolutely unstoppable at this point. Our military is absolute garbage. We really have nothing in the way of fortress defenses whatsoever, and yet, I mean, we pretty much can't be beat. <laughs> yeah, I'm tempting fate. I'd say that Usheng Vagush has earned its cockiness today, wouldn't you? And now that the lower caverns are currently free of any sort of, a, you know, gigantic one-eyed web-spitting hazards, I think we can now, in relative safety, come down here and start colonizing the place. A new fortress. The actual fortress. I have no plans in place yet, but there is plenty of room to stretch out, forge a proper home for our dwarves, and that is exactly what we're gonna do next episode. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you enjoyed watching this episode. And you know what? I feel like I don't say it enough anymore. I really appreciate you for watching. I'm just a jerk making silly Dwarf Fortress videos at his computer, but you guys tell me how much these mean to you, and it really makes me feel like I'm doing something, you know? And that's very important to me, I gotta say. Thank you all so much. But anyways, that's enough for me. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode, and I certainly hope you'll join me next time, here in Usheng Vagush. Monster Killer. And until then, you bearded bastards.